first. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we are having a Jira Palooza today, and uh, before we begin, I'd like to invite uh, Wilma and anyone else who has announcements to go ahead and share those with us. Um, so I'd just like to remind everybody that um, the Sakai Virtual Conference is still open for registration, and I will paste the, uh, the link into the chat here. Um, the schedule is also up, so if you're wondering what sessions are going to be happening that day, um, you can check out the schedule on our website. And um, the uh, the deadline for SWAG has passed. That was last Friday. So if you registered by Friday of last week, um, you should be getting something in the mail soon. Um, the uh, This year we had a choice of like a mug, a t-shirt, or a poster. So um, coffee mugs were popular this year <laughs> um, but uh, but there's still plenty of prizes and things that will be happening on the day of so um, so remember that we do um, have some prize drawings and things like that at the event and um, it's gonna be a lot of fun so I really encourage you guys to register and to encourage folks at your institution to register as well um, Sakai Camp is coming up in January of next year. So if you're interested in coming to Florida in January, um, Sakai Camp is a great uh, event to come to. It tends to be a small group, like between 20 and 30 people. It's kind of a small planning team, uh, very unconference style. So we build the agenda as we go. But it's a really fun time. It's uh, two and a half days. And then we also uh, do like an optional team building day um, where we usually go to one of the theme parks. So uh, if you're interested, I will I'll track down the, the URL here in just a moment and paste that into the chat as well. Um, there's a, a ticket form, but the tickets are free. There's no charge to attend Sakai Camp. You just have to get here and pay for your room. Um, but all the details are on, in the uh, the planning document, which I'll paste in here in just a moment. Um, and then uh, I think we are just about on the cusp of cutting a branch for uh, version 19. We're hoping to do that this week. And, um, and we are still targeting late November for the release. Um, hopefully we'll get that out, uh, you know, right around the time of the holidays. So... Um, those are all the announcements that I have. Anybody else? Great. Thanks, Wilma. Any all other right. announcements? All right. Well, we have a we have uh, 15 or 16, excuse me, JIRAs to review today. So we're going to have about maybe three minutes or so per JIRA, and some I don't think will take much time. Uh, so maybe we have a little leeway on some of them that, that need a little more conversation. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, let me bump up what I'm sharing. Can you guys see this list that I'm sharing? Uh, the From Etherpad? Yes, we can. Yes. See okay, it. thanks. All right. So, Tiffany, I'm going to let you get us kick us off with the first year there, um, the ability to lock a topic or form after a certain date. And um, do you want to sort of summarize and, and tell us uh, a little bit more about that, Jira, Tiffany? Yeah, um, currently there's an option to open or close forums and topics in the forums tool at specific dates. And very often instructors do not want the topics to be hidden from students um, after they've been closed, uh, they want students to still be able to read them after a certain date being a due date of some sort, uh, but not continue to post in that topic. And so this JIRA is proposing to allow the instructor to automatically lock the topic. You can do it manually. You can go in and edit the settings and manually lock it so they can still read but not post anymore. But um, instructors want to do that at a date. So uh, let's see, you've got the proposal and I see there has been some conversation. Um, and this is actually an older JIRA. So 
there's been some conversation, and then Tiffany, you're you're reviving it. So um, I said no, not really. I just wanted to encourage folks to vote on it if they're interested, because this is a pretty often requested feature, at least at UVA. Uh, yeah. We've had especially a lot of requests recently for it, so I just kind of wanted to bring it back to folks' attention. And Yeah, great. Thank you. So if people want to log into JIRA and vote for this, vote this issue up uh, and comment if, if you have anything to add to the JIRA, that would be super helpful. And any questions or conversation around this from anyone? We were actually talking about this in the, the moder modernized forums group, and everybody on that call seemed to think that this would be a really good thing. Um, it came up in one of the focus groups I did as well. Great. Laura, were you going to add something? Uh, just that this group has we reviewed it in April of 2017. Right, so it's been a while. I guess what it needs possibly is more votes. Um, and and hopefully the core team will pick it up. All right, Wilma, there's a few here with your name on them. The first one is the Jira to rename forums tool to discussions. And that's yeah, this is some... Um, part of a kind of a cluster of uh, forum related JIRAs that we've been filing um, again as, as part of uh, the initiative to kind of modernize the overall tool. Um, so this would not take place in 19 obviously. This is something for 20 or further out depending on, on how soon we implement it. Um, but we were hoping that if we got several of the navigational things cleared up as well as some UI um, improvements that also renaming the tool would kind of give it a fresh um, look for people. So um, also a lot of folks felt that discussions was a better label for, for yeah. the tool, um, a more intuitive label for um, you know, faculty and students. So I'm just interested to see if if the folks on this call prefer discussions over forums or vice versa. I completely agree that discussions is a more meaningful name for the tool, personally. And I'll comment in the year. I'll give it a plus one and vote for it. Awesome. <clears throat> yeah, Tiffany um, notes in the chat, can we um, do that anytime? Institutionally, yes, you can change the name at your institution. But in terms of changing it in the core code and updating the documentation and everything, um, that's going to wait until 20 because we don't want to spring people on, spring it on people at the last second. Right, okay. And at this point, it would only be a name change. Nothing else would be would have time really to get in. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. All right, shall we move on to 40428, rename start a conversation to new post. Yeah, that was again, it was part of the, you know, labeling issue that we felt um, a lot of the labels in the tool didn't really match user expectations. Um, and we decided that start conversation was, was long, kind of cumbersome, you know, for the button and doesn't really speak to people. So we thought that new post would be um, a more meaningful label for that. I agree too. I like that. The other thing is that the conversation language is used in just two places, that button and then to refer to that, you know, what a, a thread is elsewhere. And then there's also a button that's like move threads. <laughs> so it's being <laughs> referred to as two different things. So it should just be threads. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. And then 40429, make forum level optional and take users to topics listing by default. 
Okay, this one's a little bigger of a change. Um, but what we found in talking to folks is that faculty tend to be confused by the need to have a forum with a topic in it before it's visible and you can't really post to the forum level, you have to post to the topic level. So the forum really essentially is a container, it's a category more than a, an, an actual item. Um, and for people that don't need that level of hierarchy to categorize items, um, it's kind of wasted. Uh, so we thought that it would simplify the tool if, um, if you could just go directly in to create new topic. And uh, the forum level was just an optional thing that you could apply to existing topics if you needed that additional organization. Um, similar to what you do in the grade book where you can just have items or you can put items into categories. Um, so a similar idea and then it would just be kind of cleaning up some of the buttons so that you could um, you know, go straight to new topic as opposed to um, have to create a form first. Now you'll also notice some of the screenshots. Um, there's, we, what we did was we moved the forum creation button under organize. Um, that seemed to make sense for people. So, um, so it would live in the organize area. And, and we were also envisioning that um, it, it doesn't, show it in this screenshot, but I'll probably add like an updated one. We were hoping that maybe there could be a drag and drop interface as well in the organized space so that it's easier to move things around and get them in the right um, hierarchy of, of topics and forums. But we still wanted the ability to be able to use the forum level to set the defaults for, for topics within it um, because some people do use that feature. So we thought that if um, if there are existing forums and you're creating a new topic, that you would have a little drop down menu where you could put it into a forum um, when you're creating it. And at that point, you would get the option to either you know inherit the forum setting defaults or keep um, the custom settings that you already have on that topic. Mm -hmm. Thoughts around this? So I, I don't remember that part of the discussion in the forums group. The um, moving, if you wanted to move a topic from one forum to another and the forums had different settings, is the idea that when you go to move it, it can you can also choose that button to inherit the, the settings of the new forum it's being moved into? Yes. Okay. And I love, even though it's not captured here, I love the idea of dragging and dropping. I think that's I know Tiffany has often mentioned that there's accessibility challenges with with the ways that drag and drop can be implemented, so we'd have to be careful about that. But um, Yeah, as long as there's an easy method for a keyboard user to, to do up and down and things like that, it's right. fine. I think one university did come to the forums group as um, they have already done something with drag and drop uh, organization. Yeah, I think it's University of Dayton. And I can't remember if they had it working or they were just mocking it up at that point. But they also had a similar type of organized screen, but with the drag and drop in it. Um, they, they had it working, but it was not keyboard accessible. Mm, OK. OK. So that would be something that would have to be worked on. Yeah, I might actually do that one as a separate Jira. I was afraid to put too many things into this one. <laughs> yeah. So probably the drag and drop will do as a separate Jira. All right, and then you have uh, modify forums to use a centralized grading service, and this is back 40438. Yeah, that is one that. Um, as many of you know, um, Sakai is a little uh, unique <laughs> in the way that it handles grades in the various tools. So each tool typically manages its own grades and then sends those grades to the gradebook. 
And this can sometimes create some issues for people because they want to be able to, you know, edit grades from within the grade book, or maybe they end up with, you know, something where there's an error where it's saying one thing in the tool and another thing in the grade book. And forums is particularly bad in the way that it handles grades because you have to go create the forum. Um, item first and then go back to the forum and link it to that you can't kind of do it in one fell swoop so there's a lot of issues surrounding grading um, that are are very clunky particularly in forums but also across Sakai and so one thing that has been proposed is to create a centralized grading service that all the tools would use so that there's consistency so each tool doesn't have all this extra code in it to uh, manage grades the grades are all housed in this one central area and any tool that does grading calls on that service so that it's consistent and so that you can edit it from multiple places because you're editing a single source um, so this JIRA uh, is specific to forums and that once that service exists which it doesn't yet that's you know, to be added, um, but once that service exists, that uh, forums would use it. That would be awesome. I don't know where, where so 40437 is the JIRA to create the centralized grading service. So I suppose that would be an that would be the first place to start. <laughs> yep, yep. And that one actually, um, that gives me a chance to put in another plug for the virtual conference. The um, the planning committee this year decided that we would um, sort of have our target in mind ahead of time as far as how we're going to spend the conference money. So the proceeds mm -hmm. from registration are, are going to go toward a centralized grading service. Awesome. Oh, that would be huge. Great idea. So just to, to back this up, forums does not actually have any real grade management right now. It's all handled within gradebook. Forums is just providing sort of a window into gradebook items from it when you go to grade in forums. So there is no real forum grading integration whatsoever. So it needs its own service of some sort, no matter what, to actually have grading happen in it. And, and it sounds like the central grading service would accomplish that. So, right. Great. All very important, and especially for forums because it's the least user friendly right now. Yeah, it was right. definitely one of the areas that came up as, as kind of needing the most love <laughs> in terms of being approved. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. That's a good way to put it. All right, thank you, Wilma. Tiffany, you've got uh, quite a slew of JIRAs here. So we'll start with a uh, date check needed for saving Samago feedback date. That's SAC 34476. Yeah, so in uh, tests and quizzes, you can set a date uh, when you want feedback to be released to students. And this is kind of buried under the grading and feedback section, which is where it belongs. Um, but unfortunately, when an instructor edits a due date uh, or a late submission date for an assessment or assignment, whatever, um, there is no indication to them if the feedback date is earlier than that due or late submission date. And what that means is that if that feedback date is earlier and the student is taking the test after the feedback date, but before the due date or submission date, the student can see the feedback as if it's immediate. They get a feedback button, they can see all of the feedback the instructor has made available. And this has happened to numerous instructors at UVA where they don't realize that their students can see their feedback in the middle of an exam. Uh, to me, that seems like a bug. It should tell the instructor, sorry, your feedback date is later or is earlier than your um, you know, due or late submission date, and it should be later, and just not save that. You know, we have a, a date check to prevent the user from saving a um, open date later than a due date, so why isn't the feedback date check performed? Yeah. And yeah, then that you, should be dismissible, right? I mean, 
maybe their intention no. is to allow this feedback to be available. So at least if it's warning them, then they can say continue or no, correct. Absolutely not. No, I think that if they want immediate feedback, they should enable immediate feedback. And I, I don't think they should be able to accidentally enable feedback in a previous state because I guarantee that the great majority of instructors who do it, do it accidentally and do not sure, want sure. their students to see their feedback while they're taking the test. Sure. Maybe we'll, um, maybe a line in there just that says, uh, if you would like immediate feedback, choose immediate exactly. feedback or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I, I think good. I suggested that in the, uh, in the JIRA. And somebody Perfect. had commented that they thought that it might be uh, something an instructor would want to do. And I can't imagine a situation where an instructor who is setting a feedback date would want the feedback to be visible immediately during a test. Uh, you know, unless yeah, they, they're they usually just get confused. Yeah, they're just yeah. confused. Good job. Exactly. Yeah, good. Well, yeah. I, I don't think it's even confused. I think they intend to put the feedback date in the future, but they're reusing an old test and they forgot to change the feedback date or they're extending the due date after students have started the test and they sure. forget to change the feedback date. You know? Sure. Good. Yeah. I think, I think that's really good. Um, and I don't specifically see language in there for the instructor. I don't know if it's in here and I'm just not seeing it, but if it would probably be helpful to propose some language. There's actually a separate JIRA I have to improve the language on that settings page to explain what each option does. Okay. Any other um, thoughts or comments around that JIRA from anyone? I know Tiffany and Laura, you guys are both um, very familiar with tests and quizzes issues. <laughs> really appreciate you working on these. Okay, Tiffany, let's move on to the SAMAGO feedback notification to students when student response is not released. That's SAC 34605. Yeah, so this one, if an instructor releases feedback but does not select the student response option, students go in and see the questions and it looks like all their answers are blank and so they freak out. <laughs> so I would like for it to display a message at the top of the screen for students if the instructor has not released student response, just telling them that your instructor has not chosen to display that. Um, Oh, you know, so your answers won't display. Something to the student, yeah. Right, to the student, so they don't say, oh my God, my submission's blank, but it's not blank, there's stuff there. Um, they just can't see it. Gotcha. So you think it's the idea is that um, instructors may want to provide feedback without letting students know what their response is what they answered. Right. In some cases, the instructor might want to release feedback on the assessment overall, you know, some kind of comments, but not show the students their answers. Or if they allow multiple submissions, they might want to say, you know, something to the effect that what they answered was correct or not, um, but not show them their answer. Yeah. And sometimes it's just done accidentally. <laughs> Tiffany, would we want it when they select one of those options? Should we have it automatically check student response? No, because no. I, I, I think that um, there are instructors who want to not show the student their response, but still show them some kind of feedback. That's interesting to me. I, yeah. Yeah. If I were a student, I would want to be reminded of what my response was because that would help me appreciate whatever other feedback I was getting more yeah. Or, yeah. or better. There are some dependencies on feedback. So if you're doing some question level feedback, you have to have student response enabled. And, um, you know, again, that's part of that language on that page that I'd like to have improved to indicate that, you know, you need to have that checked for the student yeah. to see that that feedback yeah. um but I'm certain types of feedback are not dependent i'm reminded of i don't know if 
very many of you saw the demo that Alan Reagan did back in June of the third-party app they built into their Sakai instance that pops up little messages to instructors or whomever, whoever's using um, tools in a site to, to help guide them. And, uh, you know, instead of making these screens even busier <laughs> with more messages that won't get read, um, you know, something like that, I would envision in, uh, being really helpful in cases like this. Just a thought, but I know we're not, that was a third party app they were using that was apparently very expensive called WalkMe. It'd be nice to have something like that built in. Yeah, I think the other problem with that is that it wasn't terribly accessible because they were like little pop out things that, yeah. that may or may not have been screen reader accessible, for example. Oh, gotcha. Still. Yeah. All right. So, ready to move on? Yeah. Uh, Sam go when multiple submissions or retake is allowed, the instructor instructor option to let students see their answers entered in last submission. Oh my lord, please reword this. Uh, okay. So so when an instructor allows a student to retake a test, uh, the student gets a totally new blank test. And there, in fact, somebody was talking about this on the mailing list uh, just yesterday or the day before that. Um, sometimes a student encounters a technical issue and the instructor wants to let them just pick up where they left off or um, you know, their, their time test times out uh, and the instructor wants to give them a little extra time and just let them continue where they were. Um, but you can't do that. Um, you can't allow a student to see their previous answers in the middle of the test. And I'd like to have the option for the instructor to say, you know, include previous answers or something like that, a checkbox. Um, so that when they allow a retake or multiple submissions, the student could go back in their second submission and see what they answered in their, their most recent one and have it already pre-populated. So if there's anything they entered in the editor, or any answers they selected, those are already selected and they can change them instead of having to totally redo the whole test from scratch. But Tiffany, uh, for me, you're breaking up. It did the else now or is it just? Uh, now you're breaking up for me, Tricia. Okay, maybe it's just me. And you're, you're breaking up for me, and I'm breaking up for all of you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I might hang up and call back. Am I still breaking up? Yeah. Ah. Okay. Um, okay. Any conversation around that? I'm going to hang up and call back in. Sorry. I'll be right back. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking, thinking about, about this once, once, once more, 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 more in terms of. of um, when you when you when you create, create a quiz, quiz in the first first place, place you, you may not may not want to check that box. box. It's, it's after after after, after, after you when you decide, decide that, that a student not to do a to do a resubmission that you that you would want, want to, to say, say in this in case, this case let's, let's do this, do this. Uh, uh, show them show them their safe answers. answers. Um, so I think that could be an option, preferably enabled in, in both places. So one, if you have multiple submissions, enable it at the settings level. And two, if you allow retake, enable it at the retake for the individual student level. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think I my I don't think my audio is any better, and I do apologize, folks. You're you're a lot clearer, Tricia. Okay, well let's hope it maintains that. Mm -hmm. All right, ready to move to the next one, Tiffany? Yeah, I am. All right. Unless anybody else has comments about the feedback. 
So removing the background color options for quizzes. That's 40630. Yeah, so this is a really weird option that lets instructors add a background color to their quizzes. And it can potentially pose accessibility problems for color contrast because the text of certain answer types is always black and you can't change it. So if you put a dark enough background, it's totally unreadable. Um, a lot of instructors, surprisingly, in quizzes I've reviewed or when I'm helping troubleshoot things, do use a background color. Like they'll put this weird, you know, teal background color. I don't know why they do it. Um, I'm curious to know from you guys if there's any pedagogical reason you would want a background color on a quiz or if instructors just do it because they think it looks pretty. If they're presenting all the questions like on one page, are they trying to visually separate out the sections? That's the only reason I could think of why you'd want to slap color underneath the stuff. I can't imagine that it would help to separate anything because it's just one background color per page. I mean, I, I personally find it really distracting to have like a bright color behind my text, but. Yeah, I got nothing. With all the other settings, I can't imagine they're taking the time to pick that one out and add it. Because that's oh, under they the do. appearance, right? Yeah, it's, it's it's at the bottom under the appearance, and it's a single background color you select for the whole test. Crazy. But I have seen like at least 10 or 12 instructors over the past couple of years do it. You know, and I don't review a whole you know, terribly many tests. I, I guess it would be good to do a system review of, you know, some kind of query to see if we could find out how many people are actually using that. But wow. there are a couple departments it's very popular with. Should we disable it? That's what I'm thinking. I, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> My argument is to get rid of it. Yeah. Sounds like the core team is, or the Jira triage group is wondering um, what this group thinks about disabling it. I perfectly fine with it, especially since it poses accessibility problems or has the potential to do so. So again, voting and commenting in the JIRAs are um, important. So I encourage everybody to do that. All right. So, Tiffany, Portal, allow individual users to set custom nicknames for sites, and that's fact 40558. Yeah, this is something several students have requested from us. Um, it, at UVA, at least, instructors can change the titles of their sites, um, but many of them don't. They just leave it the title of the roster. And a lot of students, especially as they get into their, you know, third and fourth years of class, um, have a lot of classes with very similar <clears throat> titles. And so these students would like to be able to assign a nickname to their courses, uh, to their course sites, to be able to say, you know, this one is for such and such a class, something more descriptive so they can easily access them. Yeah. Uh, and I see that the triage group um, has raised a concern from a perspective support perspective that it will be more challenging to identify sites if students have different names from the instructor's name for the site. And I agree, even though I see your comment that you always log in as a student to identify the site, I can see how this would be challenging from the perspective of the instructor as well when the students are all have all named their sites differently and the instructor, you know, I, I just, I just don't like this idea personally. What do others think? So I did comment in that JIRA that I think if this is enabled, it should have a way for the user support to see what the students, uh, you know, name is as opposed to the real site title. So like, for example, in worksite setup, it should show what, uh, what it is. Uh, Laura, the, the problem is that instructors often don't change the short description and don't enter content in the short description. So students don't get anything out of changing their view to short description. 
Right, right. Uh, uh, in, our, in our case, that's not true because we are importing courses from our SIS system, which already contains the short description. And yeah, Sean, the, this would be an individual user's uh, view. So if the instructor changes the name of the site, uh, the student will still see their nickname for it. You know, it doesn't override or edit anything for anybody else. It's just something to change the display for that individual user within their own uh, sites, tabs and um, stuff. Okay, well, um, everybody can vote and comment in that JIRA to um, decide, and then perhaps the triage group will come back and update the JIRA based on that feedback. All right, back to our list which is next JIRA number 11, audit log for all instructor edits to an assignment or a quiz, uh, SAC 40771. And that's you, Tiffany. Yeah, um, we have uh, some problems sometimes where instructor edits uh, change functionality of a quiz or an assignment and, you know, suddenly a student encounters an error and they don't know why, and the instructor doesn't know why, and uh, we'd really like to know what the settings used to be before the instructor edited them in the middle of the students taking the assignment or quiz. <laughs> um, and so I'd like a, an audit log for all the instructor edit activities for assignments and quizzes, because I think that would be extremely helpful for support uh, for us to know what, what changed, because very often the instructor doesn't remember. Right, and it makes it really hard for support people to troubleshoot. Okay. Well, with that one, one of the major, major reasons you might do that is the, um, uh, the current issues that we're having with assignments and group assignments, because you don't know in what order they did their activity in. Dummy submission thing. But once that issue goes away, I think there's less need for it. Yeah. Well, for quiz settings, I think that's it would always be helpful. Uh, the other thing is uh, potential for multiple instructors in a site. Did my TA do something? Did I do something? Somebody delete a test accidentally? That kind of thing. Yeah, we've certainly encountered problems with instructors changing things and then complaining of problems. All right, so please comment in the JIRAs, folks, and vote. Um, I'm going to skip Jolie's item number 12 on our um, Etherpad list. Uh, she said she might be able to join us late, so I want to give her a chance and we'll move on to the next one, which is about sign up, modifying the export to Excel of students in an event. And that is SAC 40214. And I believe what's being proposed here, since I don't think anybody from the core team, so they were apparently discussing this yesterday, and Wilma, maybe you were there. Um, do you wanna summarize the conversation on this one, Wilma? Okay, let me look at it again. Hang on one second. All right, mute on our code before seeing assignment details. Okay, um, yeah, this was an um, enhancement that we did for Duke. And um, basically what they're um, doing is, is just a, a kind of a small change in the way that the honor code is presented so that they actually have to agree to it before they can see the assignment details. Then it comes uh, up. Uh, I think I'm looking at a different one. Oh, I'm sorry. Which one are you looking at? Sorry. I was looking at the one from Jolie. Are you talking about yeah. the... Um, 
skipping that one to the oh, next okay. one. Oh, okay. 40214. Sign up, modify, export of Excel to students in an event. Oh, okay, we had talked about this one before, and I brought it up, and nobody really seemed to have a strong opinion. Um, but uh, I think the um, the idea is that um, the Excel spreadsheet doesn't really sort correctly um, when it exports it like puts the participants all into one cell and right. they'd like to clean it up and make it one row per person but then if there's somebody in the wait list you'd need to indicate that that person's in the wait list so the solution here was to add another column um, so that is what has been resolved here um, let's see they wanted some guidance from yeah, and, and I already screenshot that they show a before and after. Uh, yeah. so they've added rows. Yeah, they just um, from the two options that they had before, they had the before and the after. Um, the after make the most sense to me. Yeah. Um, just having one student per row and then a, another column for the wait list. I like that. The Spanish call it the list of hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that makes sense, but it's not completely evident in this view that the third person listed is actually on the wait list. Even though that box is checked, I, you know, if, if maybe they were in a slightly faded color and italicized or something some other cues mm -hmm. that yeah i think work. it's a csv or is it excel if it exports as excel it might be okay if it exports as csv you wouldn't be able to retain any formatting oh, that's true yeah that's a good point i think it exports as excel but the thing that confuses me about this view is that it shows the same time slot three times I would kind of like to see some kind of a a bar in between the different time slots, like a um, not a horizontal rule, but like a an outlined thicker um, border underneath each time slot to sort of split those up, and maybe even splitting them up as you know time slot grouping together the ones in the time slot grouping together the ones in the time slot wait list well, and then the next, next time that, slot in excel you can use filtering to do that maybe not everybody knows that night and so but there are tools in excel that allow you to say i just want to see the nine o'clock options yeah, but I don't think the user should have to do that if it can be done by the file itself. If there can be a, a more clear visual division of the different time slots, I don't think that would be terribly hard to do if you can make a border in between two rows. You know, requiring the user to manipulate an Excel file is seems a little bit unnecessary to me if it can be done in the original file. Yeah, you could be right. Um, and feel free to comment in the JIRA with your suggestions. All right. So I, I personally am fine with the change and it's probably more helpful than what's currently there. And, um, you know, maybe there are enhancements as well. So, yeah, um, I mean, I think this JIRA was just kind of addressing this one little issue and not really improving the overall export. I think maybe other improvements could be made. Right. But I don't think, I think they're maybe beyond the scope of this JIRA that we might need just their own JIRA to improve the layout of the export file. 
Right. I think that's a good point. So, good a step in the right direction, though. And Sean Platt had a suggestion to have a date column that doesn't include the times to make it e a lot easier to um, delineate. I think that's another good suggestion, Sean. So perhaps you could comment similarly in that JIRA, and maybe those get taken into a separate JIRA at some point, but good to capture it. Yeah, but overall, I think this change is worthwhile. So we can comment in the JIRA to that effect. All right, I see Jolie is on the call. Hi, Jolie. Um, we are going to come back to your item right now. Uh, okay. You're ready. I'm ready. Uh, about the R code, um, seeing that before the assignment details. So that's SAC 33914. And you want to sort of summarize that for us, Jolie? Sure. Um, Duke is proposing making some changes to how the honor code displays. This is actually coming from um, our honor council and our Duke student government who had this initiative on campus to actually post the honor code in classrooms on a physical plaque and sort of in tandem with that initiative, um, make the honor code more visible in Sakai. Um, and so we were proposing this change so that the honor code shows before a student begins an assignment. The way it's designed now is if you check the box, someone sees the honor code when they're about to submit their assignment. Um, so they've actually already completed it. <laughs> so we want them to see the honor code beforehand. Um, and so Earl's done some work on this for us. Um, and it was working great with the, with the regular open date. But when he was testing this on master, the visible date option was not enabled. And um, I, I'm not sure if that's a default or not. I haven't had a chance to check, but some people may turn that on and we want the honor code to work with that as well. So the question is, so, um, so the question is, um, when you, the way it's designed now with the open date is that if, if a student clicks on an assignment um, when the assignment is open, they see the honor code first and they, they check a box that says, I've, I've, I've seen this, I agree to this. And then they don't see it again and that's saved and it creates a draft submission um, that shows that they, they have um, accepted the honor code. Um, and this is not not because they've they haven't created a, a submission yet. It's just sort of a, a draft submission um, to, to save that setting. Um, visible date doesn't have that option. Um, you click on it, you can see the assignment, but nothing really happens. And so the question was, um, you know, do we, um, you know, there would never be a draft submission with just a visible date. So the question was, do we do we not show the honor code? Um, with the visible date, or do we um, show the honor code, but then it, it would be shown every time because there's no way to, to save that you've, that you've seen it. Um, my, my issue with um, not showing it during the visible date is it's completely there, you know, possible that a student would click on an assignment and see what the assignment is and actually complete the assignment um, and then come back to submit it and then they're saying the honor code. So it's kind of the same effect as the design we have now. Um, the negative in showing the honor code during the visible date without the ability to say that you've seen it is that you would see it every time you clicked on the assignment during the visible date period. Right. So I'm just, I'm just, you know, I, Earl and I had this conversation, you know, I was leaning toward the every time because otherwise it defeats the purpose. Um, and he's like, let's just talk to the community about this. So I'm trying to talk to different um, parts of the community, starting with a teaching and learning group um, to get some feedback on this. Any comments or, or thoughts in response to, Joe, to this JIRA folks? I think it's a great idea to have the honor code show before the assignment is taken. Yeah. It yeah, makes sense too. 
It makes sense to me, but I don't understand the draft uh, thing. It's just a way to save the, the check that that the student has has seen the honor code like oh, right okay. now right now with the with the open date there's a way for them to say yes i see this and then they don't see it again right because they've mm -hmm. seen it once they've said yes i saw this if they click on the assignment again um they don't see the honor code again they only see it one time but because the visible date doesn't have that option you know the only the only way I see to make this effective is just there's no save, so they would just see it every time they clicked on it. Well, tests and quizzes after you've checked the box, if you go to continue assessment, you don't see that box again. That's a different so, design, though. It, it works yeah. differently in that tool than it does assignments. I yeah. I didn't. So we're know just trying to solve this specific be... problem. No. Right. I just didn't know if that code could be leveraged to do something similar to an assignment. I think Earl would have, because you know we're we're interested in making the change in both places, um, to, especially on our end. So in terms of the honor code in tests and quizzes, it's just a matter of us displaying our Duke honor code there, right? Right. Um, and because it 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 works, it the honor code shows before you take the assessment, so that's what we want. Mm -hmm. um, but with assignments, it did not work that way, so we're changing the design. And because we have these two different states of the visible date and then the open date you know we're trying to trying to solve that problem gotcha okay all right so i'm going in the interest of time which we're running out of i will invite everybody to vote and or comment on this jira um, to give feedback to earl who's going to be working on this so thanks for bringing it to us jolie sure thanks for taking time to listen to me talk about it yeah. Okay. So, Laura Geckler, you're up next with the uh, roll up Jira around importing from site, duplicate, et cetera, SACS 33995. And that's a roll up Jira. So, as, if you go to it and scroll down to issue links, you will see um, <clears throat> five by default and show 14 more links. So, this is a a huge kind of um, thing to do here. We're finding continual errors on the um, <clears throat> site import, uh, replace content with, you know, replace total content, or duplicate, or reuse content from uh, as instructors are creating their site initially. Um, you can see uh, our progress made to date in that some of these are resolved. Um, one of the things that just got resolved is uh, LTI tools that are part of a, a, a course that's used to create other courses, whether it has the template uh, property or not, the LTI tools are, are ready to use, ready for the instructor to click into. Um, we still have open things about the audio files they don't import. Um, we don't use the same feature. This is 34024. It would be helpful if you voted on each one of these. And if you know of other JIRAs that are already that already exist that are related to this issue, if you would link them here. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, those are my two big asks: uh, vote and uh, and link issues you you already know about to this um, roll up. And so we're looking at the open issues that are still still open under the issue links. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. Hopefully folks will have time to do that and take the time to do that. And also link in other JIRAs that could be related. Awesome. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. And Adam, how are was? Assignment uploads are failing. Back 40791. Yeah. 
This is more just an awareness, Jira, for people on the call who may be affected by this at uh, their institutions. It's less of a feature request and more of a potential bug. But I wanted to make people aware that we had instructors at PC who were downloading all from an assignment, grading using the grades file contained therein, and also um, putting in uh, student feedback documents to go back to the students. When recompressing that and uh, trying to upload all, it appears as if the upload all is failing. The, um, I placed a support ticket with Longsight, which Derek vetted, and Derek filed JIRA 40791. And then this morning, there has been um, some comments back and forth where uh, there may be two other related JIRAs. Um, upload for individuals might be failing due to the structure of the grades file, um, and that could also cascade be affecting upload for team-based or group-based assignments. So I just wanted to raise awareness and let people know if they wound up seeing this at their institutions. Great. And so there are a couple of other um, related JIRAs potentially there. They might need to be linked to this JIRA. I know they're included in comments, but it's helpful if they are linked so that they appear in the linked issues list. Um, but in any case, anybody experiencing this problem? Anyone? Hello? And this is on 12 and 19, is that, is that right? Um, this is that was, where the this, issue is being seen? We saw it in production 12.4 and Derek saw it in nightly as well. Um, Sean, with respect to workaround, um, sorry, I, my call dropped. Um, the instructor in question had had a um, group-based assignment, so he uploaded feedback and grades for the group, and assignments was smart enough to cascade that to all of the individual users that were in the group, but he hit, did have to do separate grading and uploads for each of the groups in question. So folks, and uh, Adam, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention, and, and to uh, Tiffany and Wilma and Laura as well and the core team for bringing us JIRAs to look at. This is really helpful. And again, please comment and or vote for any of these JIRAs that you have comments or votes for. Um, that's how others will know that we agree or if we have questions or, or concerns. Um, we are out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and adjourn our meeting. And thanks again to the folks who brought these JIRAs forward for us. Um, and I look forward to seeing you all at the virtual conference, which will probably be the next time we see each other. So thank you and have a great day. Thanks, Trisha.